If you're a new tech house producer, these are the tips I wish I would have known that would have greatly benefited me when I first started making tech house music. High quality samples will make you sound 10 times better. Now this one might trigger some people. How do you think you are? Oh, but hey, that's the truth. It doesn't matter how creative or talented you are. If you're using poopy sounding drum samples, you will never get them to sound like the pros or like the people that you guys look up to that make the music that you want to make. If you look at any of the top producers and you see their breakdowns, they're always utilizing third party samples. They're not utilizing samples they made. For example, when you get Ableton Live 9 Suite, you are given a 909 core kit, which sounds decent. And for sure, we're going to, you know, run the hot here and we're going to set up a basic pattern where we have, you know, like bass drum. Okay, so as a newbie producer, you might hear that and go like, that sounds great. But if you were to make something with this and then compare it to, let's say, something that Mark Knight makes or uh, Fisher, even Chris Lake, it's night and day. You're going to and then you're going to wonder, why isn't why can't I get my drums to sound that big, high quality samples? Now, here, what I'm going to do is use a drum rack um, and I'm going to put some of uh, mine, which are Evil Sounds House. Uh, the kick is from the new Deceiver 5 coming out October 21. And I'm going to put a Mark Knight Tour Room Academy clap in there. And I'm going to just do the same thing, you know, that we have here on this guy. We're just going to pass it over here. Okay, so they're at the same volume. Obviously, the 909 one sounds more released, like maybe fuller to some of you. But if you want to compete with, again, the, the, the guys right now, this is what you should be sounding like without anything on the channel, to be fair. produce music you should worry more about songwriting so again if you want to sound better 10 times samples will play a role in that there is no question about that anyone telling you otherwise is probably a hip-hop producer that is hiding their library from you to begin with or a tech house producer that hides all their sample packs because they know that this is what makes them sound good to a degree swing for the groove when i first started making music it was around 2004 and then eventually i took it seriously and made progressive trance for quite some time so i never really dabbled with swing so when I started making Tech House, there was these drum patterns that were very funky that always felt like they were out of my league. And I'm sure many of you guys feel the same way. However, I'm here to tell you that it's not that complicated and your DAW will probably do most of the work for you. So what this means is a lot of you guys will make a drum loop. This drum loop will look something like. OK, now, if I want to make this sound funky as hell, all I need is swing. OK, now. Back then, this is what I used to think swing, man. It used to mean like getting this off the grid like this. And you can definitely do this if you want to be a try hard, as they say. Um, you just want to say, nope, I'm not going to have Ableton do it for me. I'm going to do it manually because you know, if I don't do it, the job ain't right. Send me to this part of the world and I will get the problem fixed in a day type of dude. However, all we really need to do is go over here to the groove pool. Um, again, you can read the manual of your DAW if you're not using Ableton, the best on the world, uh, to figure that out. Um, and we're going to go with 16 swing 16s, which is the most popular from here. You're going to see this number right next to it. Just think of that as the, how heavy the swing is, how much is being applied, how intense, uh, we'll go with a very intense one. And then from there we'll commit it and you're going to see, this is what it's actually doing to this, to get it to sound the way, as you can see here, we have this moving, moving. This one stays the same. This one moves, shifts over. From that so that's what that's going to be doing and this is how it sounds like is that easy all right let's bring a snare let's bring in the snare oh fuck take it off now we jacking as they say right jacking off Jacking the house, it's not that hard to achieve these swings. And in fact, we can even go harder. You know, they say Night Funk swung his way to the moon uh, with, <laughs> so we can go with the swing 73 and check this out. Mm, dude, I'm bouncing. Look at that. Take it off. Oh, fuck. And then, oh. Like I used to think these guys were so pro because they had drums. Like, I'm not even kidding you guys. You guys might be thinking the same. You're like, is that fucking simple? It is. You just got to know your tools. But this is literally one thing. That 
Everyone needs to fucking know. Okay, if you're a pro, don't worry. Like I, I, I think I was making real money from music at this point where I didn't even know that I could do this. Keep your baseline simple. When it comes to baselines, again, there's always exceptions, but I always tell people, one, when in doubt, utilize the standard analog wave tables. Majority of bases out there, does it even not, even not in tech house in house and stuff will be the main ones. There's a reason why everyone says get a moog for the fat base. Work with moog, <laughs> dirty uh, bass sounds like that. It's because a moog will usually have the wave tables of a square, saw, triangle. Okay, the moog sub 37. That that's all it was. And there's a reason why it sounds so fat. And that's because we're not utilizing any complex fucking like like harmonics, whole whole fucking like keep it simple. We go with a square. There we go. I do some, a patch like this. I have some big producers tell me this is such a fat bass. How did you? I'm like, it's just fucking square. But because we're not overcomplicating it. You know, we keep things simple, guys, when it comes with the bass. Good side chain. Uh, yeah, some EQ here and there to accentuate the curves, but not. But keep it simple. For example, here I can go and make really dope basses. Like here I can do this cut off like. You know, here I'll do some MIDI from the new pack, like one, the roller one or something, right? If it sounds a little muddy, then I'll start to play around with maybe like the level of this guy. We want more pop. Play around with the left. Touch top in on the bass. We'll lower the MG low. To Uh, the moment you overcomplicate the bass, you start to lose it. For example, the other thing I see a lot too, not even thinking about effects, is the usage of these weird ass fucking wavetables. For instance, some of these are good, okay? But my problem is, is that as a beginner, and even as a person that's a pro producer but doesn't know anything about sound design, it's very easy to fall into the trap of doing something like. Okay, and that doesn't sound too bad, but it doesn't sound fat and it can't carry the song. What if we put the Juno this one down one? We just lost the bass. You can, as you can see. Now this sounds cool, and I I recommend like you can use this as a layer, and then maybe this guy. I don't know. Let's go back to the square and get rid of that. Maybe apply a low end boost. But you can see it's very hard to make these guys work. So what I usually recommend is making like a good bass that's very basic. And if you want to layer with something to give it that unique vibe, then layer it properly. And again, I do have videos for those things if you guys want to watch them. But other than that, just keep your baseline simple. Make goals when producing music. Now, creating a song is a bunch of baby steps and a bunch of goals that are met, like getting the right hook on the vocal, getting the bass to sound fat, then getting the bass to follow the, the, the vocal and then harmonizing, etc. It's a lot of baby steps. So what I should recommend people is to make goals when they come in to produce. Don't just come in, look at the track and go like, the fuck? Look at the track and make a goal of one you want to accomplish that day, set a deadline and whatever is the best outcome, stick with it. For example, here, I'm going to have this loop we just created, right? So if today I came in, I'm like, okay, I have this drum loop and I want to come up with the bass and a vocal, then that is going to be my goal for this session. So as I'm working on this, I might decide, okay, let's do that. So um, I don't have any ideas. What can I do? I'll make the bass work by adding an EQ and maybe getting rid of that top end that I'm not a fan of. Okay, it's been an hour and I'm like, okay, I got one more hour left in this production section. Let's try and get some vocals in there. Just work it and twerk it. Just work it and twerk it. Just work it and twerk it. Just work it. Mm, I'm like looking good. Sure, we'll go with that. Obviously, you know, we have the little thing and th then we're going to have that loop. Just work it and twerk it. And it's lower. It. Just work it and twerk it. Just work it and twerk it. It's sounding fucked. Just work it and twerk it. Just work it. Mmm, I'm like looking good. Just work it and twerk it. Just work it. And yeah, we need to add like a gate to that. Just to allow for the again to get the vocal. Just work it. And twerk it. Just work it. 
So then I might have something like this by the end of the sesh, right? I might give myself maybe another week to come up with like a better top line in that. But if I don't, then you kind of want to put the limitation of like, well, whatever, this vocal is not too bad. I mean, I can make it work. So from there, I might decide, okay, I got to move on. Um, let's get this vocal. This is the hook. Fuck it. Um, because you want to be mo mo uh, working forward, especially when you're a new producer, you're going to be learning as you go. So for instance, I might decide to hit it with a, a vocoder at 50% or a vocal synth, but we'll stick with Ableton stuff for today. Make a goal every time you produce, set your deadlines and meet the deadlines and just continue, finish the song. And then from there you decide, ah, uh, this song sucks or, oh, it, it came out pretty good. Let's release it. Now to add to this, a good friend of mine is by the name of Diju or Joe, as he likes to be called. Um, he actually, I asked him to give me some tips to add to this video. So this one kind of ties into what he said. Give it a break for 12 to 24 hours, then listen to it in a different environment, car, phone, whatever. Listen to the track only once, make notes and fix it in the studio. So this is similar to making the goals. This is probably something you would do more towards the end of uh, the song. Let's say you have a full arrangement out and then you're just like, okay, I don't know what else to do to it. Hear it in a different environment, maybe in the car and write down some notes. And next time you go into the studio, don't even F with anything else. Just fix your notes. Go back to the car. Do the same thing. Another great way to look at it. Even when you think you're stuck, finish the track. Try doing the arrangement and make a complete track out of it. Okay, going back to this track here. Let's say that I have this loop and I'm stuck. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm fucking stuck. There's really nothing else for me to do. And I think that's it. And I just don't know what to do. I'm hearing this and no ideas are coming. Well, this is when you can decide to arrange the track out. Now, usually what I'll recommend is people to put a song, their favorite song up here and then follow it along and organize this in a way where, again, uh, it will make sense in terms of a DJ playing it out or like however the song structure is for you. For instance, I'm going to do like a mini version of this here. I know I need to have a break after, let's say, the eight bars. And we're going to have this sounding like this. Drums like kind of scoped back. Everything scoped back. Then we're going to have the drop here. So then I'll do that. So obviously here I already have some stuff to do other than getting stuck on that loop. So I'm going to start to put effects and all that good stuff. Uh-huh. Okay, so here you have this, right? So as you start to go, you, you may start to go like, oh, I have all these ideas now popping up as you move it along. So from here, I might decide like, you know what? I, I need like a really cool kind of synth. Looking good. Obviously here we're going to have a fill. So these are things that you're going to be doing um, as you work on the song. But this will open up ideas because now I have a new motif for the first part of the drop. And then we're going to have the vocal come back in over here uh, like so. We can even use maybe this in a different variation here. Make a little variation to get the listener's attention back. So now we're going to do it again. So that you start to flow and as you start to do the arrangement, all these new ideas start to present because when it comes to making music, you have the eight bar loop. But as you move to the right, you're going to start to notice that that eight bar loop is not going to hold itself unless you start to add your swag to it. So these are just some ideas that I start to get as I produce from the left to the right. So arranging it out is a tip uh, Joe gives. And this is how you would implement it. As you start to do this, you're going to notice, oh, I need more atmosphere here. Let's bring that in. Then you start getting more ideas like, oh, I can bring this here in for this loop. <laughs> You know, 
then you start to do that. And then from there, now new ideas start to come in. So you're creating ideas out of existing stuff. You're vibing. And this is the beautiful part where you start to get into a flow state of like, damn, I got to finish this song. Fuck this tutorial. No, but the, from here, I might decide to just work it and twerk it. Just work it. Uh, so Joe Music, even though I personally like to make most stuff on the spot while producing, the actual songwriting and idea of a track is far more important than the mix and the master. And I agree with this. You cannot polish third. I think we've proven that with the sample selection, uh, making bass lines, keeping them simple. So again, guys, when it comes to making music, a lot of us think the mix and master will solve everything, but it won't. If you have a bad idea, a bad song, it's still going to be a bad song that sounds sonically good, if that makes sense. Uh, focus on the songwriting. The mixing will come. But as a new producer, if I were to say, you would approach me and say, what should I learn? Send, learn to use your tools learn how to use the DAW, learn arrangement, use reference tracks, but at the same time work on songwriting over the sauce, AKA mix and mastering. Everyone wants to get into mix and mastering to make their tracks sound fat. But a lot of the times the tracks, most people will present to me when they ask this question, aren't there yet in terms of songwriting where you can benefit from the mix and master. It's not going to turn into a number one hit or like a banger. It's going to turn it into a polished shit i guess uh that nice little round shit everyone wants to take if that makes sense but that's that's about it all right guys and those are going to be some of the things i wish i would have known when i started making tech house there's a lot more of course but these are going to be some of the big ones hopefully this helps in any way or form in helping you make better music and maybe this is stuff you know but again good to kind of hear it again uh and remember that but other than that if you guys want to support the channel make sure to head over to evilsounds.com uh, most of the loops you heard as I was working here are going to be from a new pack called the Super Volume 5 coming out at the end of October, October 21. I don't know why I say it like that, but it's a new pack. Now, my packs have been used by the likes of West End, uh, James Hype, Tuvin Berger, Umek, Alok. Uh, the list goes on, guys. I put a lot of work into them. And in all honesty, my passion is sound design and helping you guys make good music, uh, making the whole writing process simple. You shouldn't be worrying about whether your drums are fat or not when you're working on a song. You should be worrying about the ideas the groove itself but other than that you guys take care and you guys have a great rest of your day